Hey, what's up guys? It's Matt with the Movement System. Today we're going to be talking about the ATPPC system and how this system provides you with energy. We're going to talk about it from a molecular perspective of what's actually going on with the chemistry involved. And then we're also going to talk about the training and how we program to utilize this system best. All right, let's go ahead and dive into it. All right, so what you'll see here is an ATP molecule. It's an adenosine with a triphosphate on it, so three phosphates. It's really important to know these are high energy bonds, and one of our, the ways that our muscle can immediately get energy is to just break this phosphate bond right here, and that will immediately provide your muscle with energy to do something like a cross bridge cycle. Within one or two seconds, the ATP that's already there and ready to go in the muscle, this is what's used for energy. Within that next, three, four, to up to 10 seconds, that phosphocreatine molecule will break its bond, which will allow this, this inorganic phosphate to reform with this ADP, so that way we can, we can reestablish an ATP to be used for energy. So, again, really important here, guys, this is a high energy bond, creatine phosphate breaking allows that to reform from ADP with just two phosphates back to ATP, and then immediately use it for energy. So this is the system that's used within the first 10 seconds of high intensity exercise. It's really important to know that this system is fairly limited in its capacity. After about 10 seconds, it kind of burns out and then something like anaerobic glycolysis starts to take over for efforts lasting 30 to 90 seconds. So ATP is the fastest energy system. It provides us with energy the, the most quickly, whereas something like the oxidative processes they provide us with a lot of energy, but it takes a long time. So something like a marathon, you would be using oxidative processes like aerobic glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and oxidative phosphorylation. So go ahead and review the bioenergetics video that I have if you want to be more familiar with those processes. So this is an anaerobic and an alactic system, meaning that it doesn't require oxygen and it also doesn't produce lactate. So there's no byproduct of lactate that's accumulating in the blood with the ATPPC system. That anaerobic glycolysis pathway is what actually leads to lactate. So once these bonds are broken, it takes time to reform these bonds. And that's why this system requires a lot of rest. Typically we're gonna use a one to 12 to a one to 20 work to rest ratio when we're programming for the ATPPC system. Meaning that if we're doing a 10 second sprint, we're gonna rest for 120 seconds to 200 seconds. And that two minutes of rest will allow the body to reform ATP so that we can do another high intensity effort after that. All right guys, so I hope you found that helpful. Go ahead and hit the like button if you did. Go ahead and subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this about exercise science and movement. And if you wanna learn more about strength conditioning, go ahead and check out the Strength and Conditioning Study Group on Facebook. There's a link in the description below. All right guys, we'll see you in the next one.